Good evening. How's everybody tonight? Less and highly flavored. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. <coughs> Things are happening. Are you ready to go home? Yes. 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 Please. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> A little selfish there, isn't it, or what? <laughs> Come on, we got souls to bring home with us. Amen? Amen. We got work to do. <laughs> we got demons to crush. Yes. We are hunters from heaven. <laughs> Everyone turn to your neighbor and say, you're a hunter. Of demons. Thank you. Let's clear that up right away. Hallelujah. In the book of Ephesians in chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. <laughs> Whoo. Hallelujah. Listen, I, there's, anyways. We're doing this. It's God's presence just flowing in here. Flow in the Spirit, amen? Float in the Spirit. <laughs> in verse 10, would you read it with me, please? Ephesians 6.10. Is everybody there? Remember what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. Spiritually and physically. You eat a bunch of Twinkies, you look like a Twinkie. Amen? Praise God. You may outlive everyone because you're so preserved. I mean. <laughs> You'd be raptured and your body be still. <laughs> oh, snap. In verse 10, would you speak there with me? <laughs> ah. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? <laughs> okay. Verse 10. Finally, hallelujah. My brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Everybody got it? Okay, you can go home. <laughs> Be strong in the power of his might. Amen. And, and I'm going to tell you, we got to be right now very strong. Very strong. Because resistance is increasing all over. It's getting stronger. Evil's getting stronger. There's more demonic forces that have been released. Your battle yesterday will be easier today. No, harder today. Your battle yesterday was easier than today. That's what it is. And tomorrow will be harder than it was today. Amen? And it says something here. It says what? Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In other words, the trickery. Have you put on the full armor of God today? If you didn't, you need to spank yourself. Because we're in a battle. And you can't go out without the full armor. So everybody got it. See, God knows whether you did or didn't. This is how you earn his trust. Does everybody understand that? The more you are consistent, you earn his trust. Why? Because he wants to get us at a place where we see what he sees. Does everybody get it? That's how you earn his trust. When you see what he sees, you begin to earn his trust. And until then, you're still earning his trust. Amen. Does everybody got this? Everyone say, I must see. What he sees, then I earn his trust. If I don't, I don't earn his trust. So we see here that it's vitally important. Why? Because there is evil being released. Because of the things that are being done on this world. 
because of the sacrifices, because of the murders, because of the abortions, human blood shed draws demonic activity. Is everybody with me? Human blood shed draws demonic activity. Human perversion draws demonic activity. Just like the days of Noah, when the Lord told Noah to build an ark, right? Why? He said, God, I'm going to destroy everything. Because everyone's thoughts were continually perverse, evil. And we see that now more than anything. Lust is phenomenally overtaking people. Addiction is nothing but lust, amen? It's an overwhelming desire. Turn to the book of John in verse 8. <clears throat> John chapter 8, I mean. John chapter 8, verse 12. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and power his might and get dressed with the full armor of life so he can battle. So he can what? Battle. Everyone say, I'm called to battle. My purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. My destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities God has given me to rescue souls. That's what you're called for. You've got a call, you've got a purpose, and a destiny. Amen? In John 8 and verse 12, let's speak it together. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the what? I am the what? Light. So when the light's off, can you see? Amen. I am the light of the world. He who what? Follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The light of life. In other words, that's what the word believe means. It means to what? Follow. In other words, if you're following him, you're constantly taking off darkness and putting on light. Actually, every step you're stepping, you are stepping into light. You're stepping into light. You're st so your life is a walk of stepping in the light. And when you step in that light, there's a ripple effect. Every time you step in the light, there's a ripple effect. It's like stepping in a puddle. There's a ripple effect. Every time you make a step. But let me tell you, there is a false light that the enemy wants to move you out of, move you into. So what's happening then is you are stepping you're living, that's called walking in the Spirit, stepping in light all the time. That's walking in the Spirit. Is everybody okay? Okay, let's go a little further. In verse 13, Then the Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness to yourself, your witness is not true. And Jesus answered and said to them, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you don't know where... I go, know where what? I come from and where I'm going. You judge according to the what? Flesh. Because they could not get in the spirit. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. In other words, Follow the light, you become light. Does everybody understand that? Every time. That's why it's so important. We'll get more into this. As we're walking in the Spirit, we're actually stepping in light. And there's that ripple effect. And it spreads every time. So walking in the Spirit is actually walking in the light. Amen? Go to John chapter 3. So the only way to overcome darkness is to live in the light. Has everybody got it?
The teaching is called Into the Light. Because the end result was, you're going to end up in the light. <laughs> the true light. Eternal light. Into the light. John 3, verse 18. Would you read it with me? He who believes in him is not condemned. You know what's the word believe mean? Follow. But he who does not follow is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were what? Evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be what? Exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light. In other words, he who practices the truth is always stepping in the light. Does everybody get this? He who is practicing the truth is always stepping in the light that his deeds may be clearly seen and that they may be done in God. See, men love darkness rather than the light. Amen? When you come to the light, Again, it, it begins to express. It begins to expand. Every time you're stepping, we're always stepping in the light. That's walking in the spirit. <clears throat> but many people are, are not only walking away from the light, some people are still walking in darkness. See, even though that there is light, you can see light and still not walk in the light. Is everybody with me? You can see light but not walk in the light. See, there's many people that see light and don't walk in it. They're still walking according to their will and their ways. So every time we're making the step into the light because we are following. And the more we step into the light, the more light we become. It's constant. It is the light of life. Everyone say light of life. And that's eternal life. John chapter 1. In verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was what? Life, and the life was the light of man. The light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. Light shows, or light shines in darkness, right? Listen, the world is darkness. Amen? Those walking in darkness can't comprehend until they first walk out of darkness. Does everybody get it? See, you can't walk into light until you start walking out of darkness. As soon as you start walking out of darkness, light be is in front of you. Then you've got to start walking into the light. So again, the light shines in darkness, but darkness, the world, those walking in darkness cannot comprehend until they first walk out of the darkness, then into the light of Christ. Let me give you an example. Moses saw the bur uh, bush burning, right? He saw the light. He didn't change by seeing the light, did he? He changed when he what? Stepped into the light. Has everybody got it? So every step that we are making, we are to be making into the light. Why? Because you are changing. But you're always stepping out of darkness into light. You're always removing yourself like we've talked about before. Moses saw the light but didn't change until he stepped into that light. And that light is available for me and you. It is the light of life. And that's what we go after every single day. We go after the light of life. Because in light, light exposes darkness. And darkness must flee. So every time you step in the light, you become more light. You become more light. You become more light. You become more. That's how you become more healed. That's how you get stronger in the Lord and the power of his might. Because you're actually diminishing yourself and becoming more light. Is everybody okay? In John chapter 6. Into the light. <clears> 
<clears throat> John 6, 53. Then Jesus said to Moses, Surely I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. In other words, no life or light. Amen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is what? Food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. In other words, eat his flesh, drink his blood. Amen? Of course, he's talking about light, the light of life. His flesh is his word, and his blood is his spirit. His flesh is his word, and his blood is... So when you speak the word, you eat it, and you're eating light. When you worship, you're drinking, and you're drinking light. So you're always stepping into light. So the more you step into light, the more you change. Does everybody get it? It's amazing how many people refuse to abide. And they wonder why they're going through stuff. But again, you can come here and still not even step in the light. You can look at it. It can be before you. But unless you deny yourself, you're not getting in. That's where you got to get your eyes off yourself, off of your sickness, off of everything of you, off of your finances, off of your relationship. You don't look at you or anything involved in your life, then you can't step in because you can't get in the light. Only his child gets in that light. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. 2 <clears throat> Corinthians 11. Second Corinthians 11 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded at, just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are what? False apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. Now, these are false lights, counterfeits. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into a what? An angel of light. That's where you have all these religions. All religions are backed by fallen angels. So everybody got it? Backed by fallen angels. That's why they're called beasts. They're sealed. It's called the mark of the beast. And then we know that there's an end time mark of the beast. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. See, we call these shapeshifters. They can actually shift. They can put on a false light. Even the serpent had a false light to him. Amen? It says he comes as an angel of light, but he's not really a full-blown angel anymore. He's a serpent. He lost his beauty, but he covers himself. He disguises himself in light. So people see this false light. And that's where you have all of these religions. It's a false light. But its end result is hell. Destruction. Amen? I say again, let no one think me a fool. If otherwise, at least receive me a fool as a fool that I also may boast a little. So again, false lights with doctrines of demons, carrying many, causing many to step out of the true light of Christ. That's what the word says. Many are falling from the faith, taking heed to doctrines of demons and deceiving, seducing spirits. Amen? We are watching a great, great falling away. A great falling away. It's happening all over. 
all over the world. Tremendous amount of people that are falling into a false light. Amen? <clears throat> and what happens is when the people step out of the light and step into darkness, they go back into deception and bondage. Amen? And the reason for that, listen, the presence of evil is false light. It's called sin. Sin. You know, the, there's a period of time when people have pleasure in sin. And then sin begins to eat them up. Because the presence of sin will steal, kill, and destroy. So people have pleasure in sin, then it begins to eat them up. Because it's a false light to them. Does everybody get that? That people have their own religions then, you know. So in this, they're actually partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is a false light. It has a form of goodness, but it's followed by evil. Again, it has a form of goodness, which is a light, but it, it's, for, it's followed by evil. So they're partaking of these things. They're falling into these things. And listen, when you approve of things that are evil, you're also eating them. In Genesis chapter 3, into the light. Genesis chapter 3. In verse 1, let's speak this together. Now the serpent was more cunning than what? Any beast. See, he's called a beast too. Fallen angels are known as beasts. Beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, who called God a liar right off the bat. Amen. But you got to remember, the serpent was clothed with white, light. He looked beautiful. She couldn't see his true image. She could only see what he was covered with. And then he enticed her. Verse 5, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. What was he trying to do? Entice her because that's what he wanted to be like God. And he lost his beauty. He lost everything. But he wanted mankind to lose it all too because he hated man. He hated what God created. He hated Adam and he knew he couldn't get to Adam without getting through Eve. For God knows in a day that you eat, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Now we know that they didn't eat no fruit. Amen. The serpent seduced her. And then she had two, two seeds in her womb. And she was pregnant. And the Lord saw that. And it says, and the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. And then they heard the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. The Lord said, called to Adam and said, where are you be, man? Where are you? And, and he said, I heard your voice. Why? Because they could no longer see the Lord. They lost vision. They lost sight. Why? Because they are no longer in the light. They got drawn out of the light and into darkness. They could no longer see because of the what? False light. Everybody got it? Because of the false light will bring blindness every time. And, and, and so he said, look, at, I, I was afraid and I hid myself because I was naked. And the Lord said, who told you that? Who told you that? Where did that thought come from? He said, did you partake? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat or partake? Everybody got that? 
So we see a, a, a curse came from that, didn't it? It's called death. See, partaking of this tree, it's called partakers of deception, false light. Walking out of the eternal light into the temporary light, and eventually it causes destruction. It's the same thing as eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil called death. And people are, part listen, when you approve of something that's evil, you partake of it. It is the false light of life. Amen? But it is the light of death. And by not maintaining, look at, by not maintaining your strength in the Lord and the power of his might, people become easily swayed. What does the word say? Come out from among them and don't touch anything unclean. Why? Because that disqualifies you. It disqualifies you for stepping into the light. Does everybody got this? Until you let go of it, you repent from it. Other than that, if you are touching anything unclean, you are disqualified from stepping into the light. You, won't, you can't. It disqualifies you. Because in God, there is no gray areas, is there? Amen? So that means that you must turn away from it and repent. Again, people are not maintaining the strength and the power of the Lord because they neglect to abide, they neglect to eat and drink of the Word in God's presence, His Spirit. And Psalm 119. We are seeing more and more of that. Psalm 119. You know, just because the world approves it doesn't mean God does. Amen? Look at how many people fall from the area, especially with medication. Amen? The doctors prescribe false light. That's so that they are as witch doctors. They perform pharmacia. Does everybody understand that? Look, if there's medication, I mean, I agree with, but then there's medication I totally disagree with. There's a time when, you know, I mean, first of all, when you break your leg, a pain pill does not heal you. Amen? It just makes you deceived. And then you have to take more anyways. And you become more sensitive to the pain. That's how that deception works. So you get hooked because it's a false light. It's not true healing. But people just take whatever a doctor says. They don't even search it out. No, people don't even realize. You know, they, they have, oh, I have oppression, so give me a, you know, give me a, a pill. Everything is a pill because doctors are now practicing witchcraft. They no longer practice <coughs> healing. They practice management. Has everybody got this? But I can tell you there's some of them that are out there are cool. There's been doctors that I've gone to, man, the first thing they do is they pray with you. They pray right with you, man. They lay hands on you and pray for your healing before they do anything. And, they're, and they give you natural things. They don't give you narcotics and all the other stuff that the world gives and psyche things and, you know, you know butterflies and all the other stuff that they have out there. Again, you got to understand because the medical field, people don't realize. Look, what's the logo of the medical field? A serpent. Hello. That ought to be a sign by itself. If you ever get a doctor who walks in with a hand with a serpent on, get, run. <laughs> Psalm 119, uh, verse 105. <clears throat> you know, we don't think about that things because of the influence of the demonic arena is so intensified now. All of these things that are cursed items, people are partaking and touching. And it, will not, it disqualifies you from stepping into the light. 
puts limitations on you. Psalm 105. Let's speak it together. Your word is a what? Lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hello. That's stepping in the, in the light, isn't it? I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Except I pray the free will offerings of my what? Mouth, because he's going to speak it. O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, and I, I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts or his word. For your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. In other words, he has dedicated himself to speak his words. He knows that that is a what? A lamp to my feet and a light to my path so he can constantly step in the light. Stepping in the light. Stepping in the light. Those are words of life. Go to verse 66. What does it say? Teach me what? Good judgment and knowledge. For I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went what? astray. But now I keep your word. I want you to understand that affliction comes from falling out of the light. That's what the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He waits for you to touch something, agree with something that disqualifies you from stepping into the light. And then he comes and takes quickly, as quick as he can. He waits. Does everybody understand that? He's always snaring a trap for you so that you cannot step into the light. He disqualifies you for touching and aggrieving or approving something that is displeasing to God or an accursed item. And you can't step into the light and the enemy comes and steals, kills, or destroys something. That's why he said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. And now I keep your what? Your word. Now I keep it. Now I speak it. Why? Because it's going to stay in front of me. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law, which is always representation of his word. It is good for me that I was, have been afflicted, that I may learn your what? Statutes. So what did he do? He, he realized that affliction brought him understanding. He says, man, you know what? I ain't touching that again. I'm not going that route. Why? Because it disqualified me from stepping into the light. And the enemy came and took right away. He said, the law of your mouth is better to me. In other words, the words from his mouth is better than thousands of coins and gold and silver. I love it. Afflicted. Why? Because he stepped into the darkness. Amen. Again, there is so many false religious things. And many people are falling away. What the, one of the things the enemy likes to do is get you to move out of God's time. If he can get you to move out of God's time. Amen. You move out. You, you, it disqualifies you. You don't step in God's light. Because God's light. Is always an established with time. Everything. There's always that step. You're always stepping in. But when you move out of God's time, it calls you to sway. First John chapter one. You know, people will, will always say, Well, the Lord put this on my heart. But did he tell you to do it yet? Does everybody understand? And that's vitally important. Just because he puts something on your heart doesn't mean you're supposed to do it then. First John chapter 1, verse 5. And this is a message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we what? We lie and we do not what? 
practice the truth. We do not practice the truth. In other words, there are those who are still walking in darkness because they're still partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because it looks good, they partake of it. But it's not God. Amen? Now, I don't know if you've heard about how much counterfeit money has gone out now. There's loads of counterfeit money out there now. Loads of it. Everyone is checking everywhere. It's all over. It's just, a, it's just a, a sign of how many things are counterfeit out there now. Counterfeit religions, counterfeit things, counterfeit light. That's why it's so important to stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might and continue to walk. Man, don't get deceived. Don't be misled. Don't touch anything. Don't agree with anything that you know. If you don't know, then don't. Amen? Because it will disqualify you from stepping into the light. And the enemy will come and steal. John chapter 2, verse 8. Him and I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. He who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has what? Blinded him. Does everybody see that? The darkness did what? Blinded him. That was 1 John chapter 2 and verse 8 through 11. So again, would bitterness cause blindness? Would unforgiveness cause blindness? Will it disqualify you from stepping into the light? Does everybody grab hold of this? I'm telling you, we got to be very sensitive to this now and be very bold about it. <clears throat> you know, think about this. People hate humans. We're not to hate humans. We're to hate the sin. Amen? Amen? I may not like what somebody does, but I don't hate the person. Amen? We hate the sin. We hate the act of it. We hate evil. Does everybody get it? You should hate darkness. You should hate evil. You should hate sin. If you don't hate it, then you're not walking in light. Amen? Does everybody get it? If you don't hate it, then you're not walking in light, and you're deceived. And you are following, following the false light. And the enemy is slowly stealing from you. And you don't even know it. Until you finally end up in a condition where you said, my God, how did I get here? I can't believe this happened again. I thought I was doing the right thing. No. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Where there's envy, where there's bitterness, amen? All of those things cause disqualification of stepping into the next light. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it together. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship. Have no fellowship. No association. No touchy. Why? Because it disqualifies you. You cannot step into the light. You become disqualified. <clears throat> Does God still love you? Yes. Amen. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather what? Expose them. You're to exp we're to expose our stuff. Or else somebody else will. Amen. And if you refuse with the exposure of somebody else's, you are disqualified. If you reject counsel, correction, and direction, then you don't, not a, you're an individual that hates instruction 
And it will take longer for you to step into that light because the longer it takes for you to repent and turn, the further that light goes away. There's a distance that begins to build then. If you've ever noticed, if you've ever been one that's fallen or done something, that how, and then it takes time to get back in there. Why? Because that distance, the longer it takes for you to repent and turn away, the further away that light comes. The, the further away the light goes. And then what happens, the enemy sees that and he tries to put everything in your path to try and distract, discourage, mislead, comes as a false light in multiple ways. All of these things he puts in front that's good and you think it's from God when it's not. How many of you know the devil can bless you? <laughs> he blessed me good. Right out of the light. <laughs> in the darkness. I was blessed in darkness for a long period of time. But again, the pleasure of sin can only last so long until it begins to take you out. Amen? Everybody Okay. Verse 12, read it with me. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in the secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whoever makes manifest is light. So check that out. If you're manifest, in other words, if you're one that's exposing light, you're manifesting light because you are the light. So you're exposing what? Darkness. Because you hate darkness. You hate sin. You hate it. And if you don't hate it, then you're still walking in darkness. Verse 14, therefore he says, awake, you dummy, or yeah, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are evil. The days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk on imitation wine. Amen? Be filled with the Spirit of God. That's what he's saying. Why? Eat my flesh, eat my word, and drink my Spirit. So you can stay filled and stay power, strong in the Lord and the power of his might so that you're able to see and expose. Romans 13. Jesus is coming. The world don't get it, but they're going to get it. Romans 13, 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Romans 13, 11. And do this knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in a day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and any envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts and its desires. In other words, cast it off. Fight off the attacks of lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. Fight them off. Fight them off. Which are doorways into darkness with counterfeit light at its entrance. I'm going to say that again. Those are doorways into darkness with counterfeit lights at its entrance. It has a form of godliness but it really isn't. In Proverbs chapter 2. <clears throat> Good reminder. You're all very quiet tonight, man. Proverbs chapter 2. Is everybody there? In verse 10. 
Let's speak it. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. So we're going to need some wisdom, aren't we? Understanding, too. Because wisdom does what? Tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Verse 12. To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the path of what? Uprightness. And walk in the ways of darkness. So they got conned. They got deceived. They got drawn out. Amen. Again, the three categories that will draw a person is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That's it. Those are the categories. There's all kinds of things underneath them. But those are the main categories. Verse 14. <clears throat> Who what? Rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked. And who are, what, devious in their what? Paths. To deliver you from the immoral man or woman, from a seductress or sed seducer who flatters with their words, who forsakes the companion of their youth and forgets the covenant of their God. For their house leads down to death and their paths to the dead. None who go there return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep the paths of uprightness or righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Wisdom and understanding equal discernment. Again, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. So that you what? Don't approve or partake of anything that's darkness. That's disproving to God that will di can disqualify you or contaminate you from stepping into the light. Proverbs 4. Everyone say, into the light. Proverbs 4 and verse 14. Proverbs 4, verse 14. Let's speak it together. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Why? Because it's darkness, right? And do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. So you got to remember, these demons are out to try to make you fall. They don't rest until they do. Verse 17. For they eat the bread of the wickedness and drink the wine of what? Violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like Darkness, they do not know what makes them what? What makes them stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. And do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. And put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. And let all your ways be established. And do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Wow. Now I want to close at Psalm 119 and verse 1. You will be challenged and you will be tempted. Tested, challenged, and tempted. Why? To see where you are. Amen? Tested, challenged, and tempted. Psalm 119 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. 
Blessed. Everyone say blessed. Are the what? Undefiled. That means qualified. Amen? Blessed are the qualified in the way, in the way they walk. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who what? Keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will what? Praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Praise God. Blessed are the undefiled who walk in his ways and who seek him with all their heart. Again, we are in a time and a season where there's so much attack. And don't even, people don't even realize how much is going on. There is false light. There's much deception. There's much accursed items. There's much of all kinds of demonic influence which is causing people to become disqualified, not stepping into the next place of the light. That's where he says, repent, turn from it, get washed by the blood, and step into the light. Amen? Into the light we go, into the light we'll grow. Praise be to God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to release and increase more wisdom and understanding to us and a thirst and hunger for your presence so that we would come to you in true spirit and in power, surrendering, surrendering our survival mode, surrendering all of our cares, looking to you as our everything, that you would continue to fill us and strengthen us so that the power would be of you and not of us, preparing us to constantly walk into the light with you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God.